Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. Time to talk about Tropical Storm Nate. The 5 o'clock Eastern Time Advisory has come out, and let's go over that. The information here saying uh, 1,000 millibars on the pressure. Winds are still 40 miles per hour. It's pretty disorganized right now. It's over land. It is moving into eastern Honduras, coming out of Nicaragua. And so the biggest problem right now is going to be this flooding rains headline. And that's a big deal, especially down there. And there's mountains. And it's, it's a real problem. That heavy rainfall, one of the big impacts from tropical cyclones in Central America. So let's don't discount that. You know, you look at those winds there and you say, well, that's not very impressive. The winds and the pressure, you know, it's a tropical storm. It's very weak. Well, it may be very weak, but it has this tremendous flooding rain potential, and that's going to continue for the next couple of days as this moves along. The track map will be updated shortly. Uh, I just checked it a moment ago. We'll refresh it and see if it's still, yeah, still, it's still the 2 p.m. intermediate advisory, so we'll come back and look at that in a moment. First, let's take a look at the satellite loop this afternoon, and you can see, again, just a huge area of energy down here. Nate is located right in here, going to move out over the very warm waters of the Northwest Caribbean Sea, the Gulf of Honduras, where conditions should allow it to strengthen. You can see that there is definitely a little bit of stronger upper level wind flow coming out of the southwest, and that is mentioned in the discussion, which I'm going to read for you in just a moment. Uh, as it stands, it looks like somewhere in this vicinity could get a direct hit by a hurricane on Sunday. Saturday into Sunday, Sunday into Monday, something like that. It all depends on how fast Nate accelerates around the backside of the ridge of high pressure that's going to set up shop over the western Atlantic over here and steer Nate off to the west. And I mean, not necessarily like that, but uh, we don't have any big sharp fronts coming in, you know, big longitudinal troughs like this that are having Nate come out of the tropics like that. You remember Wilma? Wilma was kicked out by a trough. That was later in October. This is early October. Water temperatures up this way still very warm. The atmosphere is acting like it's September, more or less. And here we go. We're going to have to probably deal with a hurricane uh, along the Gulf Coast. So let's look at the discussion. And the one this afternoon is written by Dr. Jack Bevan. Uh, I've known him for a long time, going back probably to 1999 or so. Uh, just a great guy, and he really knows what he's talking about. Very passionate and um, uh, just a, a, a wonderful forecaster. So let's see what's on his mind. Remember, this is written by him. Okay, this is, you know, what he's thinking. You get inside his head why the forecast is what it is. Okay, so the first part here, the first paragraph, uh, talks about where Nate is located and why uh, the first part of the Forecast is what it is, about a 1,000 millibars. You know, the winds are probably around 35 knots or so, but it's over land. And later on today, uh, or tonight, uh, a Hurricane Hunter will go down there around 3 UTC, uh, 11 o'clock tonight or so, Eastern Time, and investigate what's going on with Nate. So here in this paragraph, this one's very important here, uh, analyses from the Cooperative Institute for Meteorological Satellite Studies at the University of Wisconsin suggest that Nate is currently experiencing, uh, experiencing about 20 knots of southwesterly vertical wind shear, which is more than suggested by the ship's model. So basically the ship's model was under forecasting the shear, uh, and we can see that in the satellite picture. There's some pretty strong southwesterly flow. The large-scale models are in good agreement that this shear should diminish during the next 12 to 24 hours, leaving Nate in a favorable environment for strengthening. One change in the models from the previous advisory is that the GFS now shows more development as Nate crosses the Gulf of Mexico. The new intensity forecast shows little change during the first 12 hours due to shear and the land interaction, and then it calls for steady intensification through landfall on the northern Gulf Coast. After landfall, of course, Nate should weaken as it traverses the eastern United States. And then right in here, it should be noted that while the forecast shows a peak intensity of 70 knots at 48 hours, Nate is expected to continue to strengthen between 48 hours and landfall and is likely to be stronger than 70 knots. You understand that? This is very important. So don't look at the 70 knots there. Oh, okay, that's not too bad, 80 miles an hour. Mm -mm. could be a lot stronger than that. 
And then this one right here is the real gotcha. It should also be noted that the ship's rapid intensification index values remain quite high, and any period of rapid intensification would lead to Nate being stronger than currently forecast. And I looked at that earlier, and some of those values, uh, 56% over 72 hours of a 65 knot increase, I mean, that's nine times the normal sample mean. That's, that's incredibly high. Nine times, all right? So do not dismiss this. We can hope that it's weaker, all right? We can hope that it's ragged and east-weighted and all that kind of stuff. You know, I've seen people talking about, well, maybe it's going to be a hybrid storm. I mean, this is coming out of the deep tropics over the warmest water in the western hemisphere, at the, still the height of hurricane season. We cannot discount this uh, and just hope that it goes away. And, you know, I'm not saying it's a worst-case scenario coming, but you've got to be prepared. You know, the old saying, luck favors the prepared, and knowledge is absolutely power. And this guy here, Dr. Bevan, you know, he wrote this right here. I didn't write that. That's not me wishing that it rapidly intensifies. This is a Ph.D. who works at the National Hurricane Center, and they're looking at this information, this guidance. And remember, it's guidance. It's not gospel. It should also be noted that their values remain quite high for rapid intensification. So we need to watch for that, and people need to be prepared and be ready to leave if told to do so. All right, so we're all on the same page there? Good. I don't want anybody killed by this. Uh, we've already lost people down in Central America because of the rain. Now, uh, still not updated. <clears throat> Maybe one day this will be faster. Um, let's look at the coordinates here and see if we can just figure it out. So in 72 hours, all right, so New Orleans is 90 degrees west longitude. And at 72 hours, they have it at 31.5 and, and 89.5. And so let's just look at that ourselves, all right? I know my lat long. So... 30 and 90 is roughly New Orleans, so it's basically the same place. This is from the 11 a.m. advisory package, and so it's basically going to be in the same place, roughly. So no major changes to the landfall expectation point. And remember, this is the center. The effects are going to extend well out, especially to the east of that center. Storm surge, hurricane watch, you name it, all coming for the Mississippi coast, the Louisiana coast. Rainfall, New Orleans, the pumps. This is going to be a major problem, all right? So people need to be ready. Let me just show you the afternoon Euro. This is from the 12Z run. And you've got the uh, energy coming in here through the Florida Straits that uh, has been so messy down there. This is the vorticity battle going on down here. There's Nate, and this is some other energy that was uh, tangled up over Central America. Uh, this the initial map. This is valid Friday morning, Saturday morning, and between those two, you see there's a fairly you know, quick advancement from here to there. And yes, you folks here on the northeast tip of the Yucatan, I am not forgetting about you. You know, Playa del Carmen, Cancun, uh, Cozumel. If Nate is able to rapidly intensify between this area once it gets off the coast tonight and perhaps clipping the northeast Yucatan, then you could have hurricane conditions down here. So don't discount that either. Uh, and then either way, all of this heavy rainfall and this energy is going to try to consolidate and come up towards the northeast Yucatan. So, you know, I'm not expecting a real big impact, but you just never know. All right, so don't discount this either and just play it off as, well, it's a weak tropical storm. Uh, it's not hopefully going to ruin your vacation, but maybe it will. So stay indoors, you know, if you're vacationing down there. Don't do anything foolish. Respect what the hotel and the resort people tell you about not opening patio doors and looking out at it and that you could get your windows blown in. And, and doors will slam if you have one window open and then somebody opens the door to the room. Oh, I'm telling you what, you can lose fingers. Uh, it hurts. You know, I've come close to doing that my own dumb self a couple of times, especially early in my career, when you don't realize the force of the wind on the opposite side of the room if you're messing around opening doors and windows. So please be careful with that down here in the resort areas. Uh, and, of course, if you live there, all right? So that's four, uh, 24 hours, then again, 48. This kind of whatever happens over here is very weird. If this does not exist, 
you know, it's kind of like it's trying to show some energy. I don't know. I just I've never seen that. I won't say I've never seen that before, but that oblong look to the height field here um, and the pressure field, it just looks weird. Uh, it's just not as concentrated as I would think that it would be if it's going to be strong. But you never know. We'll just have to see what it looks like for real in 48 hours. Just thought I'd point that out. Finally, though, at 72 hours, it does bundle that energy up here very close to New Orleans and Mississippi would be on that right front quadrant over here. So onshore flow, uh, you can just follow these isobars and these wind, wind barbs in here. All of this is onshore flow into the panhandle of Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, and of course into southeast Louisiana here. And that's going to produce storm surge. It does not take much. So if this is an 85 knot hurricane, let's say it makes it to 100 miles per hour, that's going to push a heck of a surge into the central Gulf Coast. And there is a lot going on down there this weekend. It stinks that this is coming when it is. I mean, when do, you, when do you want it to come, right? You know, I guess February, but we don't have hurricanes in February. Um, it's unpleasant. It's, it's inconvenient. But, you know, if people can be smart about it, we can prevent it from being deadly in the United States. Finally, moving on up into the Tennessee Valley here uh, at day four, 96 hours, it's pretty much all over. That being said... You folks here on this right side of it over here could be some very heavy rain, maybe some severe weather, the Appalachians, the foothills, you name it. You know, talking about Alabama, Georgia, the western parts of North Carolina and eastern Tennessee. Be aware as this moves in, and I will keep talking about this even as I travel. And I am. I'm traveling tomorrow morning. I'm going to take the children to school, and then I'm out of here. And I'm going to head to the Mississippi coast and go from there. Should arrive tomorrow night. Uh, immediately do an update tomorrow night. I'll do some while I'm traveling, of course. And I've got to go to bed because Saturday, it's time to get to work. This thing's going to move in very quickly, and my team and I are going to have a lot to do. I want to set out several of our unmanned camera systems. I want to set out two weather stations if we get lucky enough to do that. And then, when the eye makes landfall, we want to position ourselves just to its north and try to launch the weather balloon. I'm going to talk about that in the morning and kind of set that up again in case you're like, what is he talking about, a weather balloon? I'll show you. It could be one of the most exciting and scientifically interesting because it does collect weather data from the surface of the Earth all the way to the stratosphere. And nobody's ever done this before. There, there have been weather balloon launches in hurricanes, but very few people have ever, if anybody, well, nobody's attached cameras to their payload. Let's just say that. And we do. We have a couple of GoPros on our scientific payload. Because if you're going to collect data, yeah, I want the meteorological data, but I also want to see what it looks like. And viewing a hurricane from the edge of space with GoPro cameras is probably the coolest science project uh, that I've ever come up with. I think it would be awesome. We have, and here I am talking about it already. We've rehearsed it for about five years, and we're ready. We're ready. And maybe Nate will be the one. All right, so in the morning I'll do a video discussion um, fairly early, and then, like I said, I'm going to run my children to school, and then I'm gone. I'll be on the road. I'll be streaming live on our YouTube channel for the public and any of our subscribers and our app. Uh, if you have our app or are a subscriber to HurricaneTrack.com Insider, you'll be able to watch ad-free. I guess there's ads sometimes on YouTube, uh, but be sure to check the app. It's called Hurricane Impact if you've already got it. Uh, will be active. And if you don't have it, now's a good time to get it. Head to the App Store or Google Play, download it. There will be a lot of great information, live coverage, weather data. All of my Twitter stuff goes into the app, and it's just a nice package where everything's aggregated. That all starts tomorrow. If you've been following me and you know all about this, you know it's coming. And tomorrow it's time to go to work. Have a good rest of your evening. Here we go again. I am Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. I'll talk to you again in the morning.